Welcome back to another edition of Classic Model Trains. I keep trying to find original, oddball little things to work on. And this week's episode, I think we found one. There's a company out there in the West Germany area called Fleischmann's. They make, they make stuff. They make little trains. This one here was sent in to me from a fella named Stephen Tedesco. Stephen, I'll never figure out how to say the name of your town, but he's out there in Massachusetts. This little guy, he looks like he looks like this. This is this is what it looked like before we, you know, get going. Yeah, it, it's it's had some suffrage going on. We're gonna fix this little German switcher up. We're gonna make it pretty. We're gonna get it running back on the rails. Let's get into it. Let's take a quick look at this little fella right here. It has seen better days. I mean, it was stored in the bottom of a box that sat in the basement. And look at these wheels on it. They are corroded. Something fierce. Something's on them. Here is, what is that? Is that a, yep, yeah, there's a string wrapped up in the gears. Holy. The paint is pretty rough on it. These steps, they're banged in. This is going to be a nice little, little feller to restore. It's got words that are written in German because it's a Fleischmann made in West Germany. It's got a road number on it, 891315. You can see it right there. There's a plaque up above it. And the word, I don't, I don't know, Deutsch Bahn. I'll have to put that in a Google Translate and see what it says. We've got our rods bent up. This one's hammered out. This one's hammered out. This one's hammered out. Oi. So trying to get it out of there. I did notice a little earlier that there was a screw down inside this chimney. Oh, gosh. And he's stuck. Oh, oh there, there it is. Holy. It's got rust on it. Man, oh, man. And that'll get this body loose. It is just definitely hanging up in, just in the very, very, very back. God, I don't really want to. Oh, ah. There we go. This pin right here. She was a deep. It was in there deep. I don't even know what to say. There appears to be headlights up under here because of these two contacts going to them. Definitely a mess. This here, oh, it's got a weight in it. I was going to say, what is making it so heavy? That weight right there. Plastic shell. Yeah, this has got, there's rust inside of that shell. Rust on this weight. Ah, oh, this poor little feller. Sat in an area. The motor seems to turn, but none of them wheels are. Of course, I wouldn't turn either if I had that kind of corrosion on me. And the string in there, what does this one screw right here take off? We're going into it blind, you know, as usual. I ain't never worked on one of these. This is the first time I've seen it. So we've got, okay, this resistor right there. It's just a coil. That's how they used to make resistors. Probably to slow her down. She must have been a little fast back in the day. We're going to unsolder just that one wire. And that's going to allow us to at least get this motor out of the way. Yeah, all this is turning. It's these wheels that are not. I don't know if that body, it's heat warped. I can look down this line, give it the old eyeball, looking for a two by four, and it's it's bent down in the front of it. This The whole front of the boiler bends. Oh man, how do you, you leave it out in a shed with all that heat? You can see the chimney, the stack is a little, little crazy. Well, the soldering iron's hot. Just doesn't take any time to get this thing going. Yeah, motor's out the way. Could it be just this string tied around there? So it shut this whole project down. You know, it could bind, it could bind it up. It's really in there. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some penetrating. Some pss, pss. what do I got? I bought some of this a long time ago. Cause somebody said it's good stuff. Should have a straw with it. Now I made a mess out of my oversprayed all over my mat here. Oh look, that made it kind of shiny. <laughs> That stuff's good for something else. We're gonna let that soak, let it sit, and cook a little while. I'm gonna take this over to the sink, clean it up with a toothbrush and some dish soap. Try to bring it around, clean all these little parts up. This little feller here, Q-tips and some odorless mineral spirits and kind of wipe, wipe around it. See what we can get cleaned on that. Get this brush cover off. Brushes are stashed under in there. Clean that armature. Lube these bearings, sure. We're gonna let this, we're gonna let this sit. Uh-oh, we got, oh, we've already got a little movement. Whoa, this is already getting better. Well, the Inox started to break it loose a little bit and I've just been gently rocking it back and forth and back and forth and spraying more in there. I straightened out the valve gearing, the rods on it. They, God, they were 
It's like the thing was doing 90 miles an hour and then one of the wheels locked up and everything bent. It was, it was bad. They still need some more work on them. Uh, these open gears that are in here, they've got, they were greased and then it picks up dirt. And these are got some pretty serious tolerances on them. So as I try to go around, it, it hang, it's hanging up a little bit. And I know this, that there's still chunks of dirt in these gears that I've got to get out. Now I have this in the ultrasonic cleaner for a little bit, in and out, in and out, and I would rock these and in and out to try to wash that out. But I don't, I don't want to leave it in there too long because the ultrasonic cleaner can remove paint really good. I left the heat off, so it's just room temperature. But I'm going to just sit here with the odorless mineral spirits and just keep working on cleaning out these wheel flanges. I don't want to use any brake parts cleaner on it because that could also remove paint. I suppose a compressor with some compressed air and a blow gun could help remove the debris that's in there. And I got to go out to my service truck though. This is working because I can tell that it's getting quite a bit easier to turn these. Plus I found all this string wrapped around their axle. This little fella, he just, you know, was played with a long time ago and then just left. It looks like there's wipers in behind these wheels that pick up the juices. I hope it, I hope it's not that way because those wipers are hard. They, they're so fragile. You really got to get in there and, you know, straighten them out and everything. Ugh, guy can wish. So we're going to keep doing this until we can get these things to roll just absolutely as free, free as we can. They're still, they're still hanging up. There's a lot of scub scub in there. Mercy. We are running really, really good now. I didn't have to go out to the old service truck and spray these gears down with the WD-40 and then roll it and use the blow gun and blow and just try to keep knocking out all the dirt that was in those gears until we got it running smooth without binding up. It's still, it, yeah, it, this thing is just, it's still pretty wet with WD-40 on it. Could be that these axle tubes here, which look like they're brass, and then the axle goes through it, there could be some corrosion in there. Now these wheels were heavily, heavily corroded. Two videos ago, I said that I clean bigger wheels with the Dremel, but I don't do it to HO stuff. Well, we had to do it on this one because I wasn't gonna sand here forever and work on these things by hand. So uh, I, I don't wanna hear about micro pitting and all that other stuff. We're just trying to get this thing back doing its thing. Got a slow speed, use your thumb on the wheels to control the speed. I'm not here to try to run this out full bore. See, I just want everything to turn some. See, when she gets to revving up like that, I'm using my finger to control the speed so we don't have a giant runaway. See, this front one, it's so bad that it's actually pitted. In fact, all of these, all of these are actually pitted. It's more than likely gonna go down the track. And it's gonna make a little, it's gonna make some noise. Yeah. Since everything is covered in WD-40 now, and I don't want that, I'm gonna throw it back in the ultrasonic cleaner for a few minutes just to clean off any oily residue, and then we're gonna soap and water it, get it all no oily, so we can oil it ourselves in the specific locations. Now's a good time to throw in this week's classic model. You guys know who this is? If you do, type it in the comments down below. If you don't, hang out to the end. I'll let you know who it is. Here's a little trick that I haven't pulled out in a while. The old jewelry cleaner that you can get down there from the Walmart. I'm just gonna submerge this thing right in it. Don't have to open it up, the motor. The, I mean, the gears are, it, it's not bad, but I don't, I'm worried about the brush being, and if I don't have to, then I don't want to. We're sitting there, we're gonna give it a while, five minutes. I might agitate it a little bit, call it some names, pick on its funny looking toe that it has, talk about its bad haircut. And then after five minutes, we'll, we'll let it rest. Well, she's been soaking for a while. How about we stick one like that? So I want it in the, I want it in the water. Yes. Full bore it. Seems weird. But the uh, slot car guys tell me this is what they did. Sure, whoops that commutator up into shape. Holy moly. Gears are all sparkly. God, now we need to go rinse this off. Now that everything's really cleaned up, I can see that there's wipers on these three wheels right here. Up on the backside, they're just right at the top up here. They look like they're still touching the wheels, which is shocking. This little button 
makes me nervous. I like to think that these are picking up the ground or the other, you know, the other side of the DC. If this needs some sort of third rail, I'm gonna be pissed. Went through and made sure all the rods were just as straight as I could possibly get them. They're kind of loose, they, they flop in the wind. They just put like a pin through here and then they swedge the end of it so it can't come out. So they're not super tight, but most of the time we're always looking at them like this. So one's never gonna really know, are they? Now, I'm always talking about oil your bushings and greasing your gears, but these ones here, I'm not gonna grease them because they're out in the open. And that grease will just allow them to pick up more dust than we'll ever, you know, that we'll never need. I just want to avoid that. This thing I don't think's probably had a decent oiling since it was made. And this is that stuff from across the pond that I know nothing, nothing about. This thing could be a 1990s model for all I really know. Of course, you know, really now that a person thinks about it, 1990s, that's old enough to be a classic. Weird, huh? And everything on the valve gear that moves, it needs a taste. Not much, just a little, a little peck. Just a little kiss, like the kind you give your cousin. There's a lot of things that move on this. Howly moly. I wonder if it's gonna be a quiet runner. Now, I took this outside to the, to the service truck and I use compress air and I blow all this stuff out immediately. After I pulled it out of the jewelry cleaner, I took it to the sink, rinsed it off, soap and water, rinsed the soap off, immediately took it out to a compressed air and blew everything out. So some people worry about rusting and it's like, well, it ain't gonna because I ain't given it enough time to sit around and try to rust. Looks like there is a wick underneath of this pinion output. Now to try to get the juices is down under in here. This here looks like one of those guys, cause this is higher up in the frame. It's not down in the dirt or the track. I think I will put a little, little bit of grease on them right there. Grease of choice is the super lube. Why do I use this? Cause it's synthetic. Synthetic won't affect plastic gears like a petroleum-based grease or oil could. Could. Hear the word? Could. I've had some locomotives that have been greased with petroleum-based and the gears have completely fallen apart in them. My big boy is one of those prime examples. And then it just breaks your heart. It really does. I really like the way this is engineered. It's nice. But then, you know, it's coming from the Germans. I've never really seen them put out anything bad before. They, you know, they German engineering. There's a reason for that. Oh, we are squishing. Gotta get that gear. This gear here has got to mesh up with the gear on the wheels. There it is. Okay, I could just tell. I had a sense in the force that something was going wrong. One bolt, holding this motor in. Little snug snug. Hell yeah. We gotta put this feller back in. During the cleaning process, it just got bent around too much and it got mad and it said, I am out of here. Downside about these is when they're under tension and then you take the iron off of them and then the tension takes over and then it pops out of shape and be makes it frustrating. Hurry up. Okay. Yeah. I think this thing's ready to go on the track. So I just put the motor back in. I soldered the little coil wire on it, brought it over here to the track and be damned if it just all of a sudden boggles my mind. Motor's nice and quiet, but the wheels, they make a lot of noise. Still moving you can still hear it. Oh, about three volts. That's where she quit at. Two point five. Nice. We are below two point five right now. Heck. <laughs> right there's where she stalled out at. Wow. Now we gotta do something with that body. Try to make it look prettier. These hand railings, they were all shot. They're all rusty. They're put in there like a staple. They're just jammed in the holes and then tabs bent over. And this body, it's supposed to look like this. I found this picture on the eBay of a really nice one. So I'm sure out of all these colors of red that I had laying around, I'll be able to find the red that most matches this. So it looks, looks good, you know. 
It doesn't look bad now, but we just want a little bit more out of it. You know what I mean? Yes. Well, it turns out all that fancy cheap paint that I got from the Walmart, this candy apple seems to be the one that fit that works the best. The downside is, is this acrylic paint absolutely positively does not stick to that body. Uh, uh, I don't know what it's made out of, but it was not sticking. And, you know, I got to wait until the absolute last minute to do anything. I needed some red paint. I needed some red hobby paint, and I didn't have any. So I did the wrong thing, and I grabbed some of this stuff up. Now, you could actually brush this on. I took it, and I sprayed some in there. And then I took some of the odorless mineral spirits, and I dabbed, and I thinned it a little bit with this brush with about seven hairs on it, so it wouldn't dry out so fast. And I was able to finally sit there and take about two hours and paint all the little lines on that thing. Yep, made her work with this. Let's take a look at that locomotive and see how she came out. <laughs> 